Welcome. Look at that. We're starting. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, looks like I see three viewers. So shout out to you three. Uh, Nightbot, uh, Rabbit. <laughs> okay, it's picking up a little bit. So uh, this is episode five. Thank you, C Does It, for the graphic as always. I'm killing it every week. We've got Jay Steele with us tonight from the Cancun Toros, the current GM. And person okay. man's back. So Jay Steele, welcome to the podcast for the first time. How are yeah. you tonight? Thank you. I'm doing good. You know, just hang out, watch some football, ready to talk about some <laughs> PBE baseball. Yeah, thank you for joining. And person man, uh, how are you tonight? I know you're also watching the football game. <laughs> <laughs> right now, as people can't see uh, <laughs> my screen, I'm, we're, we're watching the same Spears game. Because <laughs> I want to see if um, the Bears can score a touchdown here. Uh, but yeah, but, but I, I'm good. Um, the Vikings beat the Packers, so that's uh, that, that, that's the only thing that matters. So the Packers lost. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, they've been sliding <laughs> a bit past couple weeks, but we are here to talk about PBE and uh, we, we uh, person man had the idea of bringing on a playoff GM. So thank you, Jay Steele, for joining us. Uh, we I do have a, a few announcements. Want to get through with those, and I'll post them and as a write up as I always do on JSync after. But first, uh, want to announce officially the new co GM of the New Orleans Rougarous is L Dorian J R Cook. So congrats to El Dorian for uh, taking on uh, what was Phillies Fan 96's role, and he moved into the GM role. And now El Dorian sliding from just regular player on the team to co-GM. So congrats to El Dorian. It looks like KC's with us tonight. Not going to ban you by accident this time. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, no, you can't <laughs> promise. Yeah, no promises, <laughs> though. Sorry, KC. Um, do you guys know El Dorian at all? Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he was on the Hubcats. Um, not when I was GM, but uh, I know he was always really active there. He's a really good user, um, so I think it's a pretty good pick. Yeah, I feel like I've uh, talked not talked to him too much, but I've seen his name quite a bit, so I know he's pretty active. So it's glad to see you know a new face to that GM role. Agreed. Uh, I can definitely co-sign that. It's and I'm very familiar because he would send a lot of clips. Uh, for out, um, for the Tahiti Top 5, excuse me. And just overall, just we were messaging back and forth a lot about Twitch stuff because he is a Twitch streamer. So um, just message, messaging me ideas about how to get clips using the highlights feature. Oh, let's go. So <laughs> the Bears did something good. Yeah, yeah uh, the, the score touchdown, which means I can uh, close that for now and I'll share my screen once we move on. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, yeah, so nice to see him in that role. And we do have a new co-GM. This is kind of a surprising one. Um, but um, kudos for to all involved to, to have this happen and make sense uh, for the Dynamos. Uh, the new co-GM of the Dynamos is now Simo 393 uh, Australian user, had him on my podcast in a .5. Uh, Johnny um, was replaced essentially and you know everyone's happy with the decision all three johnny was cool with it after talking to um lbg about it and so just really uh, exciting time for them and just an exciting time for the miners we were talking about it beforehand i guess that should i guess we can go we'll talk about playoffs soon mm -hmm. but we were this what this is an interesting discussion because it's so crazy how things just sneak up on you i'm like holy crap the draft is next week so uh, it's like, whoa. Um, and we do have two GMs on with us tonight. We were talking about the draft. Um, can you guys both co go a little bit into what we talked about before the podcast about the size of the class, what to expect in terms of amount of actives and their level of activity and things like that? If you want to see we are about a week away. So right after the next podcast, we'll be jumping into the draft. So. I'd, trying to get a little draft discussion. We probably have some users with us tonight that are going to be in that draft. You want to start off for a minute? Sure. Um, I mean, overall, I think it's pretty solid. Like, uh, the past few seasons, I, you know, the draft classes have been kind of shaky. But I think this season is going to be looking pretty good. Now, I, I may just be saying that because I have a bunch of picks, so I, I kind of I, I need it to be a good draft. 
Um, but I mean, we were talking before, and I think that we'll have uh, four full rounds of pretty solid players. Um, you know, taking into account that there are two extra picks after the first round uh, for the expansion teams, and then uh, looking at the teams that are going to be losing a fourth or you know, and or a third round pick uh, from cap penalties. So I, I think because of those, we'll get to the end of the fourth round um, with some pretty decent picks still left, and then maybe even into like the fifth round, we can see uh, some solid players up there. Uh, I, I mean, looking at it, uh, like. Probably around 50 or something players right now are actually pretty good. And then the last, you know, 40, a lot of them are probably going to be <laughs> inactive or just haven't been on the site in a while. So, right, you know, like even with 87 draftees uh, in total, we're really only looking at you know, 50 or so. Uh, that... Yeah, I feel like there's going to be a couple, you know, that are going to be those minimum earners. You know, we could hopefully try and get them to be that more active. Um, I know with mm -hmm. this draft, um, I'm, I'm, facing that we're mainly just going to have as in cancun we're mainly just focusing on our two picks that we have yeah. as in the first and the third if we get that to that fifth round and actually have a pick you know we'll always take a stab at someone hopefully there is someone at that time that we can get a steal of i know with the whole recent change to the draft process is it's a little different to get that little diamond in the rough like we did with uh zach mouse you know shout out to him he was a uh, probably like one of our favorite steals that we've had yeah but um Hopefully we do get someone like that later on. It's I feel like finding something like that um, towards the later now is more rare than you know you would expect. Now it's a lot of the people that you think are going to be the best ones are going to go first overall, or you know top five, ten, whatever it, it may be. So I'm mainly just trying to hit on those first two picks that we have in the first and the third round. But there is a quite a decent amount of people that I like. I mean, obviously I'm not going to go into too much because. I know, keep, keep, keep going, keep scoops. going. Yeah, what not, not trying to give, up? not trying to give no scoops. All right. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> hey, we we always would like a, a a nice little scoop on podcast night. Uh, <laughs> people people eat that up. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then homicide. I mean, you saw what Casey said. I was gonna say that I was pretty sure that Eldorian was a later pick, but I didn't. But uh, Casey saying that he was taking the ninth round, which is crazy. Oh my I, I, I was I was seeing later pick like he was in like the fifth round or something, but the ninth that's that's pretty insane. Is that probably like the best sleeper pick we've ever had? Uh, I, I mean I don't like like where is he? I mean I can what, go to the TP checker. Uh, wait, who's this yeah, player? Yeah, check. Uh, Cook J R Cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, with season, uh, season yeah, 17. seventeen. So you could search us. Yeah. Oh yeah, wow, that's gotta Damn. be up there. <laughs> yeah, it's it, gotta be up there with one of the best yeah draft picks of all time. It's really impressive, though. Value per pick. <laughs> Everyone else on, on top were yeah, higher picks, right? I know Sack was. I, I'm pretty sure Shu was. Obviously, Stan. Rune yeah, I mean, was. Like, 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 yeah, like here, you're, you're looking at, you know, like, I'm pretty sure Ray Fart was first overall. Rune, was, I mean, was uh, you know, uh, pretty high in that draft, like, right before Emmy uh, became GM. Uh, yeah, Joseph mm -hmm. is just the second round, but yeah, GM. first first round pick. Uh, I, I th I'm pretty sure he was like third or something, but but yeah, I mean, it, insanely good. That's <laughs> insane. Ninth round. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah, and uh, I think that this has nothing to do with the conversation. But if anyone that that works with the compendium is, is watching, the the colors here for the Toros are terrible. I can't, I, I can't read the at all. Like, <laughs> so. If anyone from the compendium wants to change those colors, maybe like black font. Well, yeah, the black font or or even just in, well, I mean, we do colors. have we do have that black in one of our uniforms, but our main colors are just that that light blue and that pink, right? That I, neon pink. Yeah, I would just inverse the colors yeah, because I can't I can't read any of that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if you're not looking right at it, I don't know if it's any better on stream. Um, what overall pick number was J.R. Cook, though? Yeah, like, so what, said 72. I, if that's ninth round, what's nine, right. nine times 12? Nine times 12. No, wait. Uh, Zach Johnson was a fifth round pick. <laughs> he said. Wow. Yeah, that's got, yeah, that's a great point. It's got to be up there. And like you said, the, it, it is kind of disappointing that we'll never be able to say that I mean, maybe barring mir miracles being worked by whoever drafts them, like 
um, it's going to be almost impossible now to have a ninth round pick become a J.R. Cook like that. Like that yeah. is well, it, yeah, like like because yeah, it, it, like how it was before, you could have someone like him that didn't apply TPE uh, before the draft, but because you know that it, there hadn't been a full season at that point, you know he just came back and was like, oh yeah, I'm good. Uh, it's much less likely to happen where someone doesn't earn for an entire season and then just randomly decides to come back and max earn. Yeah, I feel, yeah, I feel like that was probably my favorite part about the old drafting way was just for, like, I feel like it was more of a job to scout people. Mm -hmm. where you actually had to see how active they were and if they kept returning to the site, saying how many posts, and just, you know, how active they were in discords and each server or whatever server they were mainly talking in and now it's kind of like, okay, who's the most active? See, you know, how they feel. You know, are they just continuing to earn? What are their plans? And it's more streamlined, but I do miss that that extra work of scouting. You yeah, miss I, the I, extra work of scouting? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, like I, you're, no, you're... I, 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 I wouldn't say agree with that. I mean, like, I was one of the very few GMs that was opposed to switching it to what we currently have just because I, I liked, you know, like having more like strategy behind drafting, and I, I I like again I mean I like the idea of being able to have steals and have busts. I think that's fun. I get why people don't didn't want that for a sim league. Um, yeah, like, like, like I don't know, like like, I, like scouting is less important now. It's still important, of course, to know like which users are gonna be good in your locker room, but you don't really need a scout now to know who will be successful, kind of like later on, you know, unless there's someone that is saying. I'm about to drop out of the PPE, <laughs> even though I'm, I have a lot of TPE, but that, you know, that's not really going to happen. No, yeah, yeah, definitely. Just because, you know, they have a, what is it, a full two months of the season, pretty much? Yeah. Like, just to see how active they are. And, you know, I don't think someone's going to spend, um, unless something dramatic happens or some personal thing happens where they put all this time into two months and then just randomly drop out, you know, completely disappearing. But... I would go back to what I was saying about like the extra work. I would, you know, extra work as in me and obviously the few war member people that I have, us working together, being like, hey, I have, you know, just the pitching of different ideas. Hey, I like this player. They're this active. And now it's kind of like, okay, well, it's obviously this guy. Like, oh, I feel like I missed that little back and forth talk than, than the current system. And just being like having to be really on top of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, the turnaround though is it was like super fast, and um, you had a lot of nothing to base off of. Like, I was surprised I got picked eleventh. I joined like a week before, um, but I guess like like you were saying, Jay Steele, it's like, yeah, okay, they may not have a lot of TPE because they just joined, but like, are they coming back to the side a lot? Oh, it looks like they've been logging in mm -hmm. a lot. They did all their rookie tasks, even though they just joined yesterday. Um, those are the kind of things you you paid attention to back then. Now it's well, like okay, well, I mean, you, you, you still do though. Oh, it's, it's like like you still That's do true. pay attention to that, except that you don't need to for the first round, maybe even the first two rounds. You don't you don't really need to do that as much because I mean, you know, these the players up here are at least for now going to be the people that are going to be max earners. You know, so mm -hmm. it's just like oh, like when you're scouting them, one of the questions that you may want to ask is like. Are you going to be able to sustain this level of activity? I mean, you know, like people like Diesel, people like Max, you kind of know that they will be, um, you know, right. since they've done it before. Um, but, but yeah, but like as you go down to the later rounds, like all these people here, you know, you, you still want to look to see have they been on the site in the past week? Have they done anything that maybe they'd come back if, if you take them with a sixth, seventh, eighth round pick? I, I think from, a, I'm not a GM, never have been, maybe will be in the future. I, I would never. Uh, like, you know, to completely d to close that off from ever happening, potentially. But God, um, God. Uh, it, the intriguing players are the ones that, right, if you're a GM and you're looking at this list, the intriguing ones are the ones that have applied any TPE at all. Because you can, yeah. it's probably safe to say if this at this point you still are at 100, that means that you're kind of a lost cause. But if you if you ever have applied any TPE, I feel like that's a huge step, right? Like someone who went, who has even just 103 means they know how to do an update page. They know how to submit it. They know how to link things. So um, what do you guys think? Is that intriguing or am I reading into the 103, 107 too much? Uh, 103, you see, or like 103 and like 108, you see a lot. Cause it's when people just join the league you know, and they get the free training and they do their first activity check. 
Uh, so it's like if it's under like one ten, I don't think it means a lot. Um, it, like it's better than players that don't create an update page, <laughs> which is also <laughs> something that you definitely look for as a GM. Uh, like, because, like like I've had in the past where people responded to my scouting messages, but they didn't have an update page, and I said, "Hey, you should make an update page," and they don't. And then you know, like maybe in a later on I draft them, and then they go inactive immediately because they you know were never able to put in the effort to create an update page. So yeah, that's always right. like a good start. A, yeah, it was a similar situation we had, I think, a couple of seasons back where we drafted someone. He talked to us like quite a bit, but he never made that, you know, update page. We kept telling him, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then he ended up going inactive. So we took a gamble on him because he was like, oh, yeah, I've just been a little busy. Like, I'm planning to make it like definitely. We I think we took him pretty late. I think it was like a fifth round pick. And um, but so he, he seemed like he fun. talked. Yeah, but it's like he seemed like he was gonna be a little active, so we're like, you know, hey, for fifth round, if he's even minimal, like mm-hmm. that, that I feel like it's worth it. But then he ended up never making that update page, which does go back to the whole like, if at least they know how to make an update page, I feel like that's better. Like how you were saying, hummus is that, you know, having even a little bit to me, I feel like has just a tiny bit of influence, not really too much, just because at least they know how to do certain things compared yeah. to ones that are just like, I'll do it later. Yeah. Um, so now would you say, PM, you said first two rounds, it's pretty much like chalk, not chalk. It's easier. Would, so would you say nowadays the draft is one in the third round as opposed to before where the draft is one could be one anywhere now because of how linear it is? You think the draft really starts in the third round where you have to really, you know, go to GM work? I mean, I mean it, it really just depends on the draft itself. Like, I think for this season, maybe. It starts in the third, right? Because I mean, the first two rounds, you have players that are all to be you know, above, like or right now, before this next update, are all above one seventy. So that's pretty solid for those first two rounds. Yeah. You know, then in the third round is what you're looking at, like a range of like one forty five back up to one seventy. So it's a little bit um, yeah, more diversity, right? Um, I, 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 again, like, it depends on the draft itself, um, but you know, like. There isn't even that much like linear out linear. Blah, 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 blah. I can't think of words or how to pronounce things. Uh, <laughs> just because like it comes down to team needs. Like there's a lot of starting pitchers really high up. So if teams need certain pitchers, this would be a great draft for them. Uh, but there's also a bunch of you know third basemen, which isn't usually a, a huge positional need for teams unless you know, it's something pretty specific. Um, is that a shot at me, person, man, or what? For what? For, for which one? Because I made a third baseman. Wow. Well, you only got 23, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'm just saying, like, I feel like the, the reason I think a main talk in our war room was about what position I was going to make. Like, I was, bef- I've been wanting to do a uh, third baseman. I think I've had it planned since season 13, season 14 with the whole theme that I did. Um, but when, when it got towards the time where I was actually retiring, I know, uh, so Ryan made a point to me saying, like, you know, you should probably go either, you know, one of the main positions out there. And I was like, yeah, I could do a pitcher because pitcher is always, like, a kind of a need. Mm-hmm. But, you need a lot and then of I, to... yeah, I was kind of just like, I don't feel like I'm, I'm in the mood to <laughs> do that pitching because I don't want to, I don't want to play, like, make a player that I'm not going to enjoy because yeah. it's going to drag 100%. down my enjoyment to the league. So that's why I had like my secondary and third like positions as one of those more important ones, just because like if I need to be there, I'm willing to or you know I'm able to play that position with some XP. But I mean, this is completely off topic, but I just want to say, any recreate that has a junior in your name, be more original. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't know, I never got that. Yeah, I mean, you know, shout, shout outs to Diesel and Max. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and Slim, Slim and yeah. Slim. I know. I, I, mean... just, I love. I love. The, I love them three, but I just have to take that little shot just because yeah. I don't understand. You have all this creativity, and you're gonna waste it just by using the same name. Match did it too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that, are those the only four? Uh, there's probably more. I mean. Uh, oh, there's another no, one. The Meme Maestro. Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, he hasn't created a player in a while. Oh yeah. Uh, we, 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 so, so two things. What you just said. One. Um, imagine thinking I knew what position your new player was. <laughs> um, I'm just like, when I, especially no. when I saw Slim and Diesel do the exact mm-hmm. same, I was like, come on, guys. Like, I'm waiting for our, you know, our general, 
normal, you know, known guys that are reliable, say, been part of the league for a while. I want to see their creativity, and all I see is, hey, I'm just adding a junior. Why not? <laughs> what I think it? people like to be able to be um, kind of recognizable off the off the bat. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the easiest way to to make some make people recognize your player and not be curious who the user is. You know? Yeah, and um, I guess also it makes possibly, it simpler. Yeah, I also have but a feeling it, does it like might creative. be it might be just be for their like quote unquote legacy of the of the namesake i guess yes for sure because i mean yeah all the players who did it were like you know pretty high earners esteban was one of the best pitchers peter dawson was really solid one ringy boy shout out to y'all toros um (laughs) took us down though so a little salty but uh, (laughs) the stefano jr too obviously is one of the goats so oh yeah um well senior was have you guys, I mean, not, not not to get like too off topic, but it's kind of relevant. I've done franchise modes in games, and you, if, if you play long enough in certain games, I know 2K does it, for example. Like, they actually time the, the, they do the timing perfectly, where like you'll end up seeing like LeBron James Jr. <laughs> and like, like really, like James Harden Jr., like really good players after they retire in your franchise. They actually start bringing back like the offspring of, players which is actually cool i think that's cool but I, I could see why here it's not very i mean it doesn't mean creativity yeah i mean it doesn't like it doesn't mean too much i just see it as like come on be more creative but then i say like mine is kind of just a just a take of a of a marvel character like i know mine's <laughs> not that too original either but come on just adding a junior you guys could do like i feel like people could do so much more but you know no hate i'm just picking on them just because why not <laughs> right because you know this is why you're here uh, speaking <laughs> of why you're here um well, yeah we needed that no we needed that energy tonight appreciate you bringing it um yeah we do have a pl- playoffs are actually happening this week i know we've been talking a lot about the draft that's my fault sorry for that i'm just super excited because um a lot of these creates trickled in and i <clears throat> Um, got to watch that happen. <clears throat> Sorry. And, uh, yeah, it was fun to witness that, but, um, also where we started with that class was not good in the beginning. It was kind of suspect sus, but yeah, we do have playoffs coming up. Um, we got the GM of the Toros. We got the GM of the Scorpions. So I, I guess since you guys are here, why don't you make your case for why you think your team is going to win the whole thing? shoot i'll go first with this one um i feel like especially with us getting that home field advantage that is like if you know just looking at our record we're um, pretty amazing at home we need that i know we're not as a good record as you can see as the scorpions were at home but (laughs) with us having that home field advantage uh against this east i feel like it helps us the most just because you know it the parks pretty much made to our players that's kind of what we needed and we're it's shown that we have taken advantage of that and have proven that we can win. And, um, you know, I think who was, I believe Leifer mentioned it in our locker room a few days ago. Um, after we made that trade for him, he was telling us that he, you know, like being on the team, especially cause you know, he knows quite a bit of the players in our team. But, um, after the season ended, he mentioned to us that it was, I don't even remember how many seasons in a row. I think he said like seven or maybe even more how, that, seven plus seasons of um him finishing the season on a team that won over 70 games after being on the crabs than us so i feel like just us going from how we finished last season not even i don't i don't want to remember what our record was last season but i know it was like under i think it was under 500 or maybe even right yeah, above I th- i'm pretty sure it was a below yeah, 53 and 55. Yeah. So going from 53 wins to 72 wins, I feel like that in itself is going to win. I feel like we have such a strong, um, you know, offensive team, especially with Bauer. I don't care what anyone says. Bauer, MVP. Dude broke, like, records. Deserves MVP. I'm going to scream it to the world. Dude. <laughs> yeah, make a case for that, too. That's why you're MVP. Bauer MVP, I don't care. If he's not MVP, <laughs> that shit is rigged. Uh, I mean, I will heavily disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. Sorry for my language, but dude, he broke he broke a record of the, what was it, the R, RBI's, the RBI's uh, record yeah. that, that's been so held since slugging. season one. From season one, dude broke a record. I don't, I don't care. The dude played amazing. He's had his best season, I believe, ever. And um, 
Yeah, I feel like with our offense, and then we have great pitching, you know, with with uh, Nate Pearson, we have striker spin rate. He had kind of a hard, rough season, a few games that were difficult, but I feel like he's going to bounce back. And then we have the young guns in um, Vivi Zielman and um, Kid Carsey. But I feel like with, you know, with the, what we're going to plan on doing is probably move one of those two into the bullpen so we could have that three-man rotation in the playoffs. But, you know, we, need, we needed that bump to our... Um, or bullpen like we did with that recent trade right before the trade deadline to get shower handled. So I feel like our team is pretty good set up. We just like everyone, sh if anyone's paid attention to the teams, you know, our team is probably the weakest at our bullpen position. But if we hold those, get those leads early and hold them, I feel like we're, we're going to win the whole thing. I feel like that's the best thing. <laughs> no, uh, he's, he's made a lot of great points. Uh, person, man, can you click on the Cancun Toros page? You can see the rankings where they are in each stat. Like on the Cancun Toros oh, team page. Uh, teams. On the bottom right. Yeah. Do you, do you want? Yeah. Bat, yeah. So you, you, it kind of shows exactly what you said. Batting wise, uh, top tier team easily. Top three at, at worst. Prob probably top two. Um, second best. But um, pit, bullpen wise, or just pitching wise. Oh no, bullpen here is good. It's, it's not bad. You, yeah, it's yeah. Good. I, it, I mean, I feel like a lot of games that I've watched on stream, a lot of games got blown from our bullpen. So that's just why I feel like that's the worst for me is just, I mean, looking at TPE wise, obviously that's obvious, but sometimes TPE doesn't really mean too much, especially when it comes to that bullpen. So we have that, um, you know, the personal strategies or the bullpen strategy set up a certain way. Like um, Davey is such a huge help with us when it comes to our strategies. So he, he does a lot of tests for us on the team. So I feel like with his little tweaks and stuff, he I think he already had a plan for me to set um, to at least test, look at, and then possibly set it as our our pitching um, setup in the playoffs. So he's done a really good job, especially with how you know we were kind of just clawing at any type of pitching we could fit in the bullpen throughout the season because we had you know I think starting the season we had only three bullpen arms. So just to have I think I think we're at like four or five now with with shower handle. I think that makes it. Um, but I feel like he's had a good control of it, uh, a good help with the whole team, just setting with those strategies. Um, obviously, having you know the higher TPE player, the higher TPE bullpen arms stay in longer and be used more often. Yeah, but starters ERA, like your bullpen may be better than your starting rotation, um, based on what I see, especially since you traded for shower handle to shore it up. So I feel like I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Um, yeah, not not to mean to interrupt. I mean yeah. to interrupt, but I'm kind of pissed off that the Chargers just lost on the final play of the game. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, who'd they play? Denver. Wow, that's kind of an upset. I mean, uh, rookie quarterback with the Chargers, you can't. You can't really have the world of expectations mm -hmm. for that. Wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out, time out. Sorry to everyone <laughs> that wanted to see things. Uh, uh, but what happened? but the. I don't know what's happening. Just ten seconds, apparently, in the Saints Bears game. So I, uh, I, I don't want to show on stream because we get in trouble for showing yeah. like copyright material. Oh, okay, they're going to overtime. Okay, well, I, I, can't, I can't. Dang, that's how you know these boys are dedicated to this league. Don't ever, ever discredit <laughs> their, their dedication. Person man, Jay Steele, and they both. Well, maybe Jay Steele should be thanking us because uh, he was talking to us and. It was in a nice state of mind while his Chargers had a, a yeah, you a know, close loss. Yeah, blew blew a twenty four to three lead. You know, whoa, wow, yeah, that's sad. And uh, yeah, I, and that last week, I or two weeks ago, I was on here and I missed. Well, I kind of peeked in with Tua getting his first uh, reps, so that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah so it is 7 32 y'all which means it's time for your questions we do have we did have a lot of people in chat just talking tonight shout out to brand uh bf hilts um brandon fry and obviously kc 15 has been with us all night danny b just joined uh we did we didn't talk about the minors per se but we did talk about the s22 class so we pretty much um, exhausted all kind of conversations. So if you were listening, you, you got some great JPT material if you're, if you're uh, thinking about what to write about. So 
Um, yeah, I still have to do all my point tests tonight. So, I, I, I said I was going to do them during the football game, and then, you know, it just didn't happen. <laughs> I said, oh, you know, I'll just do it before the stream. Yeah. Oh, that, again, that was just stupid. Yeah, um, yeah so we'll answer questions if people have them. Most improved player of the year, uh, Zach Johnson or Bauer? <laughs> I mean, it's obviously got to be Bauer based on just because Bauer was so bad last year. Um, like it, it, it was, I felt bad for him. I had, cause like it was the worst season of his career, even worse than his rookie year. Um, Hey, what up? Kay? Well, I'm, I mean, yeah, Bauer's here with us. It's rookie. I mean, well, I'm not counting <laughs> okay, the full, okay. first yeah, full yeah. season. Rookie, yeah. And, I mean... And he did so much, and like he did better, and he regressed harder. So he regressed harder than last season, and just blew his numbers from last year out of the water. So, um, yeah, it, just on paper, it's really hard to say Bauer's not the most improved player. We could pull up Zach Johnson too, but um, what but do you guys not. think? <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, I he might is with be us biased, but. <sighs> Of course, I know. I know. I know. Steele's answer. <laughs> <laughs> we, you just screamed Bauer for MVP. Yeah, for like half an course. hour. No. I mean, it's deserved. Very. Both have comparable years, yeah. actually. Well, well yes. Yeah, so, I mean, Zach Johnson was worse last season than Bauer was, but I think Bauer's just a lot better. And Zach is was this year. Let's see, fielding wise, I didn't see Bauer fielding wise, but he plays well like first base, so it doesn't really yeah. matter. I mean, that's pretty good defensive numbers. It's it's also a uh, a major jump, not a major, but a pretty sizable jump defensively and offensively for Zach Johnson. Mm -hmm. So I mean, he definitely would be number two for MIP if we had it. And it is an interesting <laughs> award, but we wouldn't be able to put it into the sim. Our awards kind of are based around the sim because it's all automated for us. So. That's why MD, we had you can only get one custom award, and, and so we picked MDM, so we have to stick with it. But um, it definitely would be an interesting award, definitely a good media piece. Someone yeah, should do definitely. a, a most improved player media piece. I'd read that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be a good series. Yeah. Should we add a most improved player in? Oh, JK. He's like JK. Um, <laughs> has an MVP and MLB ever won most improved player? Do they have most improved player in? I don't know if they yeah, do. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't think baseball has it. Yeah, I'm gonna say I can look it up. I'm a Marlins fan. I've I should have been able to see at least one Marlins player in my life <laughs> being contention for most improved because we've been so bad. I mean, it's a great media piece, but we literally can't put into the sim. We're kind of uh, not handcuffed because we do have a lot of options for. I wouldn't call it handcuffed, but it's we're kind of just restricted to what the sim can allow. Yeah, I don't think there is. <laughs> Literally, Leafers like check Zove's Rove's zone ra range. Is that bad? Oh, he was in what? Oh yeah, please. We did, I think we did this before, but now we get to see the full season one, so yeah. it's like official. Let's see, I mean, one forty one WRC plus. Incredible. Batting field <laughs> twenty seven point one. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, is that bad? Uh, you know. Oh, man. I mean, to be oh, I, I, to be fair, he's a short. Uh, he he's a DH playing one of the hardest uh, defensive positions in the PBA. I mean, it has to be the hardest, right? Uh, I mean, e either this or center field. Are the center, two yeah. Two hardest right. between that and center. So, <laughs> yeah, oh, great job. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great content for the pod for sure. Um, shout out to Leifer for having that idea. Oh, let's see. Rove is like putting Bartolo Colon in center field. I agree with that. Um, 2019 award winners are Carrasco. Oh, they do have it. So it was Carrasco oh, and Josh they? Donaldson. Yeah, MIP. Oh, wow. Interesting. I was about to say, I couldn't find it. I'm trying to look. Well, I, I mean, just did it's... a quick little search, but whatever. Zach throwing shots says it should be illegal. Um, I mean, I mean it's definitely kind of crazy that uh, I don't think we've ever had a DH build playing shortstop. Well, it, well, well, yeah, like we haven't had this exact scenario, but we have at least like a, a national a few seasons ago 
played non catchers at catcher for the entire season. It somehow somehow they they had better uh, run throwers out than I did because that's a whole lot. Uh, <laughs> all I wanted to do when I first created first time lesson was on a gold glove, and for some reason he's just so bad, even with the like, max defense. I mean, yeah. I think I, because I, I, if I remember right, I think I saw Emmy uh, talking in, I, if I remember right, I think it was in our locker room, in the Toro's locker room, well, Toro's general chat. Um, our lobby chat. They, yeah. They were saying that they they were tanking. Like, I'm pretty sure everyone knew they weren't going to finish great, so she kind of, you know, was embracing that tank. So I don't think she she knew or she cared about how well or bad. I'm pretty sure all the players on the team knew that you know they weren't going to compete and they were probably going to tank for the one because you know i think like she mentioned in our in our chat saying they've had in the last two sims this is on uh october 29th they said in their last two sims they've only won eight games we well, yeah. two sims and that's like what like 20 something yeah uh wow yeah not not good um we did have a question about playoff predictions um from leafer I know you got you guys made your case. It's kind of obvious, I guess. The probably the question should be towards me since I'm, like, for the first time in my career, completely uninvested in the playoffs. Um, I think I think, man, I would like to see. There's so many matchups I really want to see, like, um, there's because I want to see DVS, and I want to see no. them go against the Sloss, but I also want to see Cancun go against. DBS too, but I mean, this is not shade, but I, I also want to see a, two teams that may have, have haven't won it in a while. Well, that's that's actually not true. It's, Cancun did win it recently. <laughs> but I guess then, yeah. I, I also want to see if Nashville can make a run. Um, you know, they definitely tightened up a lot of things, and after even just getting that rotation together, they also you know moving for making moves for Brunson's corpse. Um, who had a pretty good season, all things considered, and uh, just really strong pitching overall um, could could bode well. The sim is kind of interesting because blue line that, that's definitely going to be a storyline. How blue line does because he has had an amazing regular season career, but playoff wise been kind of suspect, like hit or miss. Um, also, Boise kind of making moves last minute. Uh, get grabbing Lemieux off of Vancouver was kind of a, a, a move that kind of went under the radar because of how Lemieux did in Vancouver. But if you look at his numbers since joining Boise, he's been really good. So um, I think it has a lot to do with just defense. And I know FIP is a thing, but I feel like in the sim, when your player is doing bad because that defense behind them or just like below average, I think it, there's like a kind of momentum buff or nerf or a momentum kind of trigger that just they just start playing bad regardless of bad defense too so having good defense behind him and boys at least much better than vancouver's it should be um interesting to, to see that but right now i'm saying dvs is going back to back they just no they're not they, <clears throat> i mean they haven't they haven't fallen off at all despite oh, yeah. everything that happened you know <laughs> Um, you know, seasons I, progressing. You know, for me, I, for me, I, 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 I just want an excuse to, uh, to to have this page open. No, yeah, <sighs> much longer streak than Vancouver's for sure. Well, no, well yeah, like, it's, I mean, it's not, not close. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, not even trying to be like 15, like biased, like trying to look outside from not being a GM side. I mean, it is pretty given that DVS is probably expected to win it all, or at least go back, you know, make it there. But. Um, I feel like it just depends how, you know, at least for me, how how we plan our strategies and just hope for the sim to play well. I mean, I feel like it just it truly just depends uh, depends on you know each sim, each little strategy per sim, and those little those little changes that could mean a lot, you know, in those games. Right, and it's no, there's obviously no shade at anybody. Like all they, these top teams, any of them can win, but I need the TPE. Um, because I'm about to hit my first season of regression. So I just kind of have to go with what kind of the Sims telling me to do um, just because I really need a TBE. So <laughs> it's definitely no, no offense towards any other team. I, I, <laughs> I just want a really entertaining playoffs. That's what I'm really hoping for. We had 
a pretty entertaining playoffs last season overall. Um, but yeah, just really want like really, I want these early round matchups to be intense. I want um, not ejections, a- anything but and like basically up like as intense as up to an ejection, like a game seven ejection, <laughs> like before that, like right before <laughs> that. Um, or a hey, or that fly ball catch by um, Ms. Obvious. Yeah, who ran into the stands to get one. Yeah. <laughs> like Love deep into the into the like lost in the stands yeah i re- I still remember i was uh talking with my my team in our law lo- in like voice chat and um i was driving home from work when that happened and i saw like because i think i was like in a drive through getting food or something like that and i saw him like was watching while i was waiting to order and i see that ball go up and i was like oh that's game like that's game and i just hear everyone scream like oh my god he caught it he caught it and i was like Y'all are bullshit. Like, just stop. Like, I get it. But when I looked, everyone was all like, "Oh wow!" Like, I guess he caught it. Uh, I, I still remember that was insane. Um, like, I, I back to you, or just to even bring it up too, especially with us being back in the playoffs, man. I hope like playoff fitted comes back. I for I know fitted has been kind of cold the past few sims. Um, I believe in the last month, I think he's, he said he was like only gotten four hits. So we're hoping he's saving that all for the playoffs, his, his hitting. Um, and then hopefully playoff Leafer shows up too. We need that Nate Pearson fire as well as striker spin rate to, to do well. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, he was really good that playoff run. Um, obviously, people remember his ERA was absolutely ridiculous mm-hmm. when you guys won it all. Um, but I guess I haven't really checked that much. He didn't have a good season. Uh, spin rate? Yeah. Yeah, oh, his team, his I feel like on a couple a couple games, it's just his ERA just got destroyed. It was just unlucky, you know, circumstances. Uh, I believe, like, let me let me bring up his thing. Uh, Do you want me to go somewhere? I mean, oh yeah, just look up look up how Striker Spin Rate did this season. Uh, where's team Sora? Where there? No, it's the top one. No, spin rate. Oh. <laughs> I'm only half paying attention. <laughs> uh, he had a, yeah, it's all good. Let's see. He had a 377. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, he did have a few games that it did, you know, kind of get screwed. I know I've missed personally the, the few Sims recently. I think the last weeks I've been, like, incredibly busy, so I missed it. But I, I feel like that's a good finish the season from what I remember seeing him as. I know his ERA was a little bit above four for a little bit. And I know his um, his record. I'm glad to see you know positive for sure, definitely. Especially him being you know our best pitcher out there. So that's that's good for me to see. Not as not as um, bad as I remember. So that's great to see him actually do that way. And he needs to continue this hopefully through the damn postseason. Yeah, um, you know, looking at his recent games too, had a lot of good games. I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, N- nothing more than a four run outing that's really good uh to go into the playoffs you know you, you don't want to go into the playoffs with a recent outing you know with a six run outing you know so um just keeping steady putting it into the bullpen and the bullpen's been above average much way above average top third so um in, t- in terms of era giving up runs so mm-hmm. should be fun definitely should be fun uh wait who's the ace going into the playoffs for cancun I'm pretty are sure. We spoiling? We're, well, I wouldn't say we're spoiling, but I would say we are talking mm-hmm. about it a lot. I know we are talking about it a lot, but obviously you can say it's it's going to be either Spin Rate or Pearson. But but we are we are talking about it, just trying to do a couple of sim. Uh, obviously, we have to wait to see who our matchup is going to be. But we are doing a um, a few sims just to kind of like expect both sides in case, and then uh, going from there really. I know, like I said earlier, Davey, Davey does a lot of the testing for us, so it's it's good, you know, that I have people on the team that are willing to help the team and want to actually provide that extra help, even though they don't, they're you know, don't have to. Yeah, uh, should be interesting how you guys sort that out because they're, they're all like on the same level. You can even make the case for Zeman too. Uh, yeah, Zeman's to, to, to playing put, a phenomenal. Yeah, put her in in the first game. I mean, <laughs> that's gonna make you feel good um as a gm that you have options that is i did i am seeing the who's not michael fitted but you said playoff fitted as a different animal saying uh and a different beast 
So. Yeah, our our uh, our title run a few seasons back. Like he he was probably the one that carried us through a couple of the series. Uh, it was usually like we had a joke going on. It was pretty much our bottom half of the lineup was carrying us through, and it wasn't you know you, you know the expected hitters and people that would get on base. The top four at top four hitters they weren't doing anything. They were pretty much all cold, and then the the bottom half were hot. Especially fitted fitted was I think he that one of the, one of the series he was batting like a 500 so yeah. i'm i'm hoping he plays like that again wow um, especially really it makes good. me yeah i have to bring this up to uh ace carter's been playing insane too so i i'm of course going to vouch for him for silver slugger <clears throat> for shortstop i know there's a few a few arguments we had this conversation in our locker room as well it was between oh man who who we were talking it was McDonald, Rove, and yeah, for some reason, Rove yeah. up there. Yeah, I believe they were talking between it. Crazy but, that uh, your, you know, kind of goes IA, and this player still pushing at the plate, like at the plate, just still kicking. So a lot left in the tank. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, that's another first name, last name kind of thing too. Just smacked by regression and just <laughs> what I number three in RBI well, regression doesn't exist <laughs> I don't know what the heck is going on I mean talking about regression too what this is Bauer's first season in regression and look at him that's like a thing though isn't it um Jax did the same same situation JD didn't Jax that, didn't that happen to small as well or was that also not something i just know that that makes me super excited the work for regression is gonna suck <laughs> um i'm commissioner i'm still gonna be over here like confused as all heck doing it um but yeah that makes me happy because if that's actually a thing then i'm yeah. super excited to get my regression done yeah so for me my regression started this this season for me i'm, I'm in my third year regression now so wow Three, actually, my three best seasons in the league have all been in regression seasons. Oh and it's so somehow. You were Max Erner, so at yeah. your pre regression. I was just about as high as you get, yeah. Yeah. Four point. It just didn't have a good season. Oh, and like Lever said in the chat, too, Josse had the same similar situation, too, where he yeah. started playing insane, his regression. Man, I just really got to pray to the OTP gods, man. <laughs> but I get the same treatment. Um, yeah, that because I did it, it. I we were talking about it before, and that's just a testament to the sim itself. That there, I think there has to be then. Um, I mean, this can't be all coincidental where every player's best season is after they're removing TPE. Um, I think there has to be some kind of experience buff, um, of being in the league longer and rookies coming in newer players and so having that advantage of your players been in the sim longer so you're getting more respect mm -hmm. i don't know i mean i wish i got hit with that but i feel like with me changing position <laughs> screwed me i feel like i remember a few seasons back i think it was um before i made the switch from second base with the center fielder uh i remember talking with I, I know ryan uh so ryan he was telling me that i was on pace to probably be one of the best second basemans ever but then you know team needs happened and I decided to bite the bullet and make that switch another, to center field. And probably, another case for, oh, sorry, just yeah. another case where Steele is just proving his dedication to the league. Like, just, could, <laughs> just dedicated to the competitiveness, competitiveness of the league because you could easily could have made it. It's a strong, it's a very, you know, argu a very strong argument and one that people should have been or could have been happy with is like, hey, I'm just going to stay at second base because, you know, don't, I don't want to break what's not broke you know, i don't want to fix what's not broken right yeah i mean like my whole idea when i first joined the league you know i never expect to be a gm i know uh i i've mentioned it before when ryan and i got the expansion team we did say that was like our whole plan from when we joined it would be great to be a gm together but you know i never expected it to happen especially so soon as it did i think it was like four seasons after we were even in the league so um i always saw myself as playing a second baseman the whole my whole career staying as a second baseman and then maybe on my second character or second creation do that you know whole jump around to what people needed but um i ended up switching just because um i knew we had a few i think it was like one of the seasons where we had an 
not an abundance of second baseman, but we had an extra second baseman. I think we put Jax at second, and we needed a center fielder, so I, you know, went to that. Mm. I'm pretty sure I had an absolute, like, terrible season. Like, I think I had average batting-wise, but uh, I know my fielding wasn't the greatest, and it could – I I just remember it was, you know, for the good of the team, but part of me still wishes I did stay as a second baseman to see if I could have carried on because – especially with the whole arc changes and what happened with that. And it's pretty, it, you know, it's just that, that thing that you think about and just be like, what if, but I, you know, I'm kind of glad I did make that switch. Cause I'm without that switch. I don't think we would have won that. Um, that you, championship. Stole, you stole my next question. Do you think, <laughs> I guess I can't ask it now. I was going to say, you think that move, if you didn't make that move there, the, the likelihood of you guys winning would have dropped. Um, I probably, uh, and you would think have you had, had a ring. It, I, don't, I don't know. It just depends what we had to do, depending on what we've gotten. I, I know I wouldn't want to move. I'm trying to remember what our roster was back then, but I know for sure I wouldn't have gotten rid of um, – we would have kept Jax, probably either put him at um, third base. Uh, i just trying to remember. I don't remember who was playing what position on like on those times, but it just depends. We would have had to trade someone away or a few people away and just – try to work with what we can so depending on what we would have gotten out of it who knows um but i do feel like me making that move did help us get that push to the title because you know we did end up winning a title and that was huge that that season you guys stole it i didn't steal it from vancouver but i mean <laughs> i would that that's not that's kind of extreme but we played against you guys you guys ended up winning yep so that made me a little happy it's like okay at least we lost to the champions like he when you go out in the playoffs, I know from my favorite sports teams, you want that team that beat you to go all the way so you could be like, you know, puff your chest I, out. And, yeah. you know, like we played hard and fought hard against the actual champions of the league. So, yeah, I think, I mean, it's like, it kind of makes, it helps me make this little transition too. With it, with that season, we had all those doubters as we did before. And, you know, I know I mentioned to you guys before the stream started, but. <laughs> It seems like once again we have those doubters, um, which I feel like every team has a doubter. You know, uh, I mean, maybe not DVS because they're the favorites like all the goddamn time. But I feel like you know, with us having that doubts, I know I told you guys, but we do have those those takes uh, that our team saved up, and I think one of our players is working on a media piece about it. So if you see one coming out soon, then you know you know what I'm talking oh, about. But yes, yeah, spicy yeah, media. There, there's gonna there's gonna be a little spicy media. If not, I'm I'm possibly thinking of if I get the t the free time, I'm gonna try and make a little, um, like hopefully try and make like a little like meme video type thing to, to call everyone out. <laughs> kind kinda yeah, kind of like a montage calling people out, but. It just depends what happens in, or if I even have the time to do so. But I'm pretty sure one of our players did mention they were going to write a media piece about the hot takes from other people. And, you know, especially I hope, um, you know, like I said, Haseo, Zach Mouse, I know, you know, I love you, but uh, it's got to hurt seeing that one million go to Jose and not getting that five million because you predicted us not making playoffs, huh? especially us winning division. <laughs> Dang, yeah, we're getting spicy tonight. We we got like five minutes left, so I'm glad we got got you to, to you know to go on that rant. It was needed. Um, saw the screenshots. It's like, ah, uh, you know, I, it, it it's interesting because you see all the moves that were made. I don't know how someone could say that Cancun has no shot at the World Series or something like that. I mean, it made it made sense at the beginning, you know, because like one of the posts was from Symmetric saying, you know, the, the teams that we did play were, you know, ones that were expected not to do so well. And then once we played the first our first series against the Voyagers, they, you know, beat us. I think it was I don't I'm pretty sure was it a sweep of the series, but uh, our thing was it was the first series of the season and it was at, you know, New York. It wasn't at our home, which, you know, I, I mentioned before in this podcast that we're stronger at home than we are away as it shows but um yeah it's good it's good to see those people that do doubt um your team and then you come around and just prove them wrong it's it's you know that little thing about being a a, a gm that's has that good feeling inside of be like look you guys thought this side and look what happened you know i know what i'm doing we have a plan you know we try to see it through and it works out as commissioner I, it's just happy this for me to see motivation i don't care where it comes from um 
that's like my dream. Like my dream as commissioner is to have a full slate of people in jobs that are motivated to do those jobs. So the fact that you're telling us all right now that, you know, you've been motivated all season by people saying, ah, yeah, Cancun has no shot. Um, it makes me happy. So thank you to those <laughs> uh, people. <laughs> Please keep doing that. <laughs> Whoever you are. Um, and I mean, it's like, even if, you know, you know, I don't want to even say that we're not going to win, but say we don't win. I still feel like with like how we talked about the beginning of this, of this is um, the draft class is pretty deep. So I feel like regardless where we go, we're going to get a good pick or uh, wherever we are. So it's going to improve our team. So I'm excited. Yeah. Um, we got like not much time left person, man. Um, who do you think w gives DVS the best run for their money? Uh, I mean, this, based I, on totality, like <clears throat> looking at everything. Well, I mean, I, mean, if they, I think this pretty clearly gives the sloths. Uh, they're easily, it's in my opinion, the second best team in the league. Um, and, yeah, they're, 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 like, they're really the only team in the league that I don't really want to face. But like, you know, we're lucky that for them and also for Cancun, the only way that we would play them would be in the World Series. So yeah, yeah, if, if like we've already made it that far, I, I'm good with <laughs> yeah, uh, us, our talks too, our us talks to our our talks as well is that we'll, the team we're most worried to play against is the slots. Besides DVS, I'm assuming. I mean, Whoa. I feel like uh, there was I I know Ryan sent it to me before, but there was only a few teams that like two teams that we finished under 500. I know the slots were one. I can't remember if DVS was the other, but I know we we okay. are really planning. I mean, like you said, the only way we play the Scorpions are in the World Series, but I feel like, you know, just for right now, our worst, not worst fear, but the team we don't, that we want to face the least is the Sloss. Wow. Well, you guys heard it here first. Draft order format, it's it's all, like, just the champion has last pick, right? I, yep. Uh, yeah, just to make sure I didn't get that wrong. Yeah, so champion has last pick, and that's the only difference in the uh, standings draft order so should be fun um it is eight o'clock uh, according to my clock um any last questions you may want to get in before we shut down for the evening Let's see luckily we don't have to rush off to world series but yeah and then the bears already lost so i'm done with that i do have one more task to get to Oh, oh the Bears, Bears lost? Yeah, I think they went to overtime, then Saints got a field goal. Hey, we Sorry, can cry no. together. It's okay. Both yeah. our teams lost. But the Packers lost, so that I, I, can, I don't, you know, I'm not sad about any of this. I can't say anything. <laughs> Kansas City won and the Raiders won, so. <clears throat> and L LPG, won, we so. did cover that. Uh, mentioned the fact that CMO 393 did, uh, did get the new position of co-GM of the Dynamos. Johnny is stepping away, so. Uh, shout out to the Dynamos. I am in that locker room. Not very active, more of a lurker, but um, nice to see a, a relatively new user in a, a management role um, pretty quickly. Cool, really cool person. Makes really good cards. If you guys have ever seen them, the baseball cards that Simo makes. Um, yeah, overall, just a great move by them. What did I miss? You missed an hour of uh, a little bit of football talk in the beginning mixed in. <laughs> But mostly PBE talk. So if this were to get graded, we, we would be able to get paid out. Um, <laughs> let's see. Do you miss being GM? Who, who are we talking to on that? I think he's saying, do you miss him being GM? Do you miss... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you miss me oh, being Oh, he's GM? talking to... Wait, who? He's, he's saying about himself. Reefer. Oh. I'm, I can't <laughs> read. I'm sorry. Um... Do I miss Lee for SGM? Of course. The heck? Uh, yeah, that was one of the more sad news that I saw coming through the uh, through the ticker was, you know, Lee for stepping down. That was, you know, pretty difficult um, to stomach, honestly, because I was like, dang, this is someone who I just want people who are really motivated and good at the job. Um, the Crabs are, are doing well with the rebuild, though. Shout out to them. But yeah, that. It definitely hurts not having Leifer as a GM. Do you ha give your prediction on the topics in the draft? Uh, we'll cover that next week, Awesome. Uh, great question, though. Definitely want to get to that next week because that will be the last podcast before 
the draft, even though, wait a minute, we will have started the offline. Yeah. So we probably can't eat more. Yeah, we should probably be barred of doing any draft talk next week. Um, I, I mean, we, we can, it's just we can't, like, say what happened, but we can talk about, like, the draft. I mean, well, again, like, we, we talked about the draft a little bit, and pretty much what we said was, like, you know, like, it's pretty clear who the top players are. Uh, we didn't talk about anyone really specifically, other than the players have Junior in their name and how uh, Steel hates them for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shade thrown. Uh, yeah, so we didn't really, we, we did talk about the draft, so... A little bit. You, if you watch it back, you'll be able to see us break down S22 pretty strongly. Uh, looks like not many other questions coming through. Slim going fifth round. Uh, he's earning really well. I don't foresee that happening at all. Um, oh, yeah, especially yeah, being a pitcher. Me. Definitely don't foresee Slim dropping all the way to the fifth. Mm. That would be a little crazy. Yeah, so no. nobody's to no, yeah, like I, I mean, I can see him dropping. I can see him dropping to like the second or something, but I don't. Wait, you see like, Slim dropping that far to the fifth? Leaf yeah, yeah, yeah someone's saying to the fifth. No, like, like I, I, yeah, I, I, again, I see him starting to the second, maybe. No, nah, uh, I feel like Slim, but, Slim's going to be taken top ten for sure. Yeah, well, it, it depends. It depends. I don't know what his, what his relationship. I mean, with I know, I know, he's is. a relief pitcher, but I have a feeling he's going to do the whole flip to starting and then go back you kind of have to in this league uh yeah because of how the payment works you're you're restricted to paying relievers the same as starters so uh having a really good reliever on a bad team is pointless you don't you don't really see that that often like usually they'll move like teams will move them so if you have goals of being a really elite um reliever you're kind of restricting yourself to how the rest of the team is um, but if you're a really good starter, you could be an ace on any team, so long as the defense is like at least around average or higher. Um, yeah. But yeah, that, 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 that was an interesting discussion topic. You know, okay. having Slim back in because he went IA pretty uh, hard with a shake it off. Never earned more than a thousand yeah. TPE. Oh wait, he had another player before Rodriguez Jr. Yeah, so Shake It yep. Off was a Swifty and oh, wow. Florida Space Ranger, yeah. Um, see, my, and I only know this because he's in my class. Mm. Um, and he was on my team, so it's like double win, <laughs> double whammy with that. I feel like as a as a GM, when you see another GM, well, when he was a GM, recreate, or you know someone's going to a specific team, you just don't even pay attention to him. <laughs> right, exactly. They're not really a, they're not a prospect. Yeah. They, you can kind of, yeah, you kind of literally just tune them out altogether. Um, so that Are definitely you... makes sense. I know this is just a question for the next um, the next podcast. Are you guys going to be talking about like free agency then, like possible? Well, I would, oh, that's probably, probably what I would yeah. rather. Yeah, well, 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 I mean, starting tonight, right? Um, opt out thread should open, opt out, which I, 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 well, I well, 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 James, <laughs> we're not able to talk to people opt out until I'm the end of the World Series, but it's exciting to see who I can potentially reach out to. <laughs> Me and me and P Man, I know we going after a certain someone. Yeah. I, well, well it was, uh, uh, although um, I I learned like, like a week ago that 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 person opened up talks to other teams, so we we have a little bit I mean, more to fight. But but not you know. Yeah, but still, I know I know I know yeah. we're the two the two top yeah. teams. So which to be fair, in the past like three seasons, it's really been uh, DVS and Cancun for some like the top prospect or top sorry free yeah. agents. I feel pretty, like you're pretty our consistently. When it comes to free agency. Yeah, pretty consistently it's been between the two of us for a lot of people. What, <laughs> Fly Eagles Fly, yeah. and then it was who was this Matt last recent one? Um I don't even Jabs had a really good season, all things considered, with uh regression hitting him really hard. He was probably our best starter. Um at the lowest TP. Oh, well, Jose had a pretty good year. Just like being a junk with a below average and field defense really killed us. Um, and, uh, but yeah, Jabs hovering right around three. Um, I think he ended the season with a complete game. Uh, yeah, def that was a good pickup for us. But yeah, for the most part, a lot of, a lot of good players are, are going to those two teams. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, SD Core, he, we were in talks with him as well, but I still think we were able to offer him kind of what he wanted because, like, I pretty much offered um, SD just like a, like a one season contract. Uh, but like, hey, but, get but, all the scoops. Well, 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 I mean, that was a couple seasons ago. Um, you know, two, one or two seasons. But like, we, we, I was only able able to offer him a one season deal because you know, we had uh, Willie Colon coming up from the minors, and he's an ex earning right fielder, so. He was gonna get that spot I think, no matter what, but yeah, yeah. It, it, it'll be fun. And then yeah, we should definitely talk about that next week. For yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I'm I have more fun recruiting with free agents than draft, honestly. Um, but it yeah, is a lot of fun. Uh, okay. Uh, before we, uh, you, you mentioned you want to be a good, no, not that. Uh, go over it for. I won't really say anything because it's mostly in the post. If do you think wants to fucking Oh, yeah, it? sorry. So yeah, that's yeah. no, fine. Perfect way to end the night. Thank <laughs> you for bringing this up. Yeah, so Person Man wrote a post about epilepsy awareness month. Uh, asked him before the podcast if he can go into it. So, um, I mean, I, I yeah. mean, there's not really much to say. Like, I, most of it's here. Yeah, I mean, November is Epile- Epilepsy Awareness Month. Uh, I mean, I go over kind of like my experience with having epilepsy when I was much. It's so fucking wild to, to think that, like, okay, it was like, like when I was seven years old, I mean, I'm 21 now, so that was 14 years ago. So it seems, I don't know. This doesn't seem so uh, long ago. But yeah, uh, I used to have epilepsy when I was a kid for like a year and a half, two years, like when I was seven to nine years old. Uh, so I talked about that. Uh, some other stuff, like how I was uh, interviewed for uh, local news in Chicago at 3 a.m. in an in IHOP. It's always fun. Uh, and then I give some links just to kind of check out um, get some information on Epilepsy Awareness Month, the... Uh, foundation that I volunteered for in the past, as well as a couple other things. So yeah, so go awesome. check, check out the post if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, then, you know, feel free to ask questions on the post or DM me if they would need to. Yeah, definitely uh, everyone go to PB Discussion under the help desk uh, and check it out. It's a lot of cool cool stuff to read up on. I have, I have a cousin that dealt with it, now nipped it nipped it and it's pretty much away now after like he talked about medication and stuff but uh, it was definitely a scary time um and i can only imagine you know being seven you know that being you know pretty crazy so and just a, just a you know difficult to, to manage to work through at such a young age so you know shout out to person man we got some you know, tough cookies here in pbe and uh definitely one of them that's pretty incredible man that you you know you were playing sports during it, right? Oh, like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, like my entire childhood, I played sports. Like during this time was when I did, you know, like baseball, tackle football. Uh, probably basketball could be on there, but I was never like super into basketball. Uh, I did karate, like in sparring, for a very long time, like during that age, as well as like like that was kind of like towards the end of when like I, I was like a pretty avid swimmer. Like I kind of had to stop swimming because of uh, uh, seizures. Because you can't have a seizure while I'm in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. We didn't even like. The, I didn't even think of that. I thought like just for, like, general sake, it was. Just, but I didn't think that deep into it. That wow, how dangerous that is! Holy moly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, even for me, like, like again, like, yeah, like, like I said, like I think I said here, like, like the type of epilepsy that I had, it was very, very mild. Like, there's definitely people that I've, yeah, I've met. That have epilepsy that's much much like worse and like much more intrusive on like your daily life uh so I, in that regard i'm lucky that you know like the type i had was wasn't really too extreme but yeah just like losing consciousness essentially for like a short amount of time but like you know so many times per day yeah so definitely go out check out that post you know read up on some stuff if you got some time tonight and you know just become educated because this this is a, a big month for epilepsy and uh you know it hit, hits close to home for us here in pbe uh with you know having our sim head uh as you know someone who had to fully recover from this pretty you know like you said intrusive uh disorder so uh thank you everyone for joining uh had a solid crew of about 10 averaging all night um Kudos to you guys for sticking with us all night. Sorry for no polls. I was kind of weak on the polls this week. Try to go <laughs> harder for that next week. Um, and yeah, you guys have any goodbyes you want to say? Uh, any shots you want to take? Uh, I don't know. Uh, 
is it, the playoffs will be fun. I didn't really say it, but it should be. I think this should be a really good playoff um, year, like at least for uh, the family. Like all the teams are in the playoffs. Like in the regular season, we pretty much won like fifty fifty with them in our matchups this season. So it, it should be it should be exciting. It should be a good one. It is, yeah, I, I agree. I'm in the same boat. It's going to be pretty exciting. Um, all I got to say is, uh, you know, person man stinky, I guess. Well, yeah, um, I mean, yeah, but I mean, they, they, they know that at this point. Bauer MVP? No, uh, no, he's maybe top four. See, what else? <laughs> Nate Pearson, pitcher of the year. Um, um, Ace Carter, silver slugger, shortstop. There you go. There's, there's my little takes. <laughs> yeah, uh, Evoc MVP, though. I mean, just, she just had like such a crazy season. <laughs> uh, Again, well, no, well, better than last season. She wait, had it, the playoffs. It, yeah, 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 last in the playoffs. Yeah, well, like I don't know, like first time listening, it's probably gonna fall number five for MVP voting. Even though I probably in past seasons I probably could have gotten like top three, but I get I don't third season question. <laughs> no, okay, uh, bye. 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 <laughs> Shout Later. To the World Series.